the market for a new machine? Or your very first machine. Or perhaps you want to add one more machine to your collection. Hey guys, it's Boki here from Gigi's Fabric Shop and home of Juki Junkies and we wanted to do a video today and talk about all the things that come into mind when you are deciding to get your new sewing machine. So there's a lot of things that go into it and the first is definitely your purpose. So what are you doing with this machine? What is your hobby? Are you a bag maker? Are you a garment sewer? Do you quilt? Um, or are you just kind of like a hobby kind of sewer? You just do a little bit of everything. Um, after that, it really comes down to deciding the category of the machine. So there's a couple different categories to go with. You have like a small travel machine, um, very similar to like the HZL 80 or the 70 or the LB 5120 or 50, uh, 50, 100. 20. Yeah, there's so <laughs> I many. I have to remember. We have the DX7 model, which kind of falls into the uh, bigger computerized machines. All right. And there's lots of machines in that category, but we'll go into that in a little bit. Then if you're a garment sewer, do you need a serger? Do you need a cover stitch? What exactly are you looking for? Um, and then next up we have the mechanical machines, which are our semi-professional machines that only go um, forward and backward. They're just straight stitch machines. So after you discover your purpose and what kind of sewing you're doing, you have to narrow it down to your category. So let's start off with the travel machine. So for Juki, they offer four different travel machines. There's the HZL 80 series, there's the HZL 70, there's the LB 5100, and the 5020. So what is a travel machine good for? Um, it kind of fits for two groups of people. So the first one could be someone who has a lot of sewing experience and you do quilts, you go to retreats, you want a lightweight machine to travel with, you know, put in your car or take up and down the stairs, keep at your cabin or take to a friend's house. Um, a nice lightweight machine that is reliable to do your small little projects, your piecing, your quilting, you know, kind of hobby kind of sewing. Or if you're looking to get into sewing and you need something to just kind of learn the foundations of sewing, what everything means, kind of put your foot in the door. Um, starting off here is a great place because it's budget friendly and you'll start kind of uncovering what you like and what you don't like in a machine and what you're going to start sewing. If you guys are ever curious about pricing um, at any point in this video, we're going to have a lot of links down below in the description about comparison charts. Um, if you ever want to know pricing, just go to jukijunkies.com and everything is in there. But that travel machine is going to be the most affordable range, you know, to kind of get started or just to have that backup machine. Next up, you have the computerized models in um, the Juki world. So there's lots of machines in this category. It goes down from like the HZL G220s to the F series to the DX7 series. We're gonna link the DX5 uh, and 7 comparison video in there too. And then you have the top dogs in this category, which are like the NX7, DX3000, and the 4000. So this spectrum is very, very broad. So in here, this kind of machine would go for the person who wants to have variety, who wants to have a versatile kind of sewing. So it's great for the person who's quilting. It's great for the person who's garment sewing because it's going to have the zigzag stitches. It's going to have the buttonholes. It's going to offer that variety there. Um, the DX7 models and the fives and anything above there is going to be great for the person who's making handbags um, because it offers a lot of adjustments to it. If you watch those videos where I talk about what makes this machine so special as well as the NX7, you'll see that all those adjustments go hand in hand with bag making because you really have a lot of control. So in the computerized world, there's a lot of series. You got to narrow it down to which one you like. You gotta look at the bells and whistles that every machine offers and what best suits you. So there's gonna be things you like and you don't like, and maybe you're not making handbags, so you don't need all those um, controls like the DX7 offers. You could look at the F series, so like the F600 or the 300 or the 400. Um, so it just all kind of gets broken down into categories and you can go to our website on our machine comparisons chart. And of course, we're gonna be doing some additional videos in the future on maybe like the specific groupings, but. This is going to be the most versatile machine option here because it has the variety of all kinds of stitches and you can accommodate to what you like to do according to which series. So moving on to my people who like to do garment sewing, you know, your hobby is making clothes and doing things like that. You'd probably want to consider getting a cover stitch or a serger. So here I have the Emma 1000, which is one of our top, top of the line um, sergers that we offer. It has the air threading technology, so it literally threads itself. Um, it's pretty awesome. 
I'm definitely going to do another video in the future talking about, you know, the detailed differences between a cover stitch and a serger. Um, sergers are going to be, they're going to, they're going to have that knife system. So they're going to cut the edge of the fabric, sew that edge of the fabric and make sure that it doesn't unravel. Whereas a cover stitch kind of helps do that professional top stitch, that finish on the clothes that you see, like on the edges of your cuffs and things like that. Um, so it doesn't have a blade. So, you know, the serger is going to be for that person who wants to have something, you know, on hand, quick, reliable, and with this air threading technology, it makes the threading so simple. Sergers can be kind of a pain in the butt to thread. So this is definitely super, super spoiling. And then there's like the DX, I mean the MO2000 that's above this, that's even more spoiling, but we'll do that for another day. But this category is gonna be for my garment sewers, my apparel sewers, um, if you do curtains, um, anything like that, that you need a nice finished edge, this is where you're gonna go. Our last category is going to be the semi-professional machines of the straight stitch workhorses. Um, I'm going to kind of talk between both of these machines because this is where most people struggle is like when do I need to go to a computerized machine and when do I need to go to something that only does straight stitch. So straight stitch machines are going to provide you power. These machines are fast, they're all aluminum, the inside is all aluminum and they only go forward and backwards. So they only provide a straight stitch. Um, and half the time in our sewing projects, that's all we use. We're just going forward and backward. So this is gonna be really nice for the person who does handbags. It's gonna offer that power. It's stronger than the computerized machines. It goes 1600 stitches per minute. So it's just a stronger, more powerful machine. Um, and it resembles kind of like an industrial machine. So this is great for the handbag makers. Um, if you've seen our video where we talk about the three differences between the 2000, the 2010, and the TL18, you'll understand which one fits better for the bag maker or the quilter because this machine also goes really nice for the person who's quilting. If you're free motion quilting, this machine's going to be beautiful for you. Free motion quilting is a must. Um, bag making is a must. It's very, very versatile, but it differs from this machine because it doesn't offer that variety like this machine does. So this machine has the 300 built-in stitches, whereas this just goes forward and backward, has the bells and whistles, the adjustments, the um, it's more user friendly, whereas this machine is straight to the point. It's, you know, mechanical. It's going to be reliable and get the machine done. Both are reliable, but this is just a different beast. It's, it's, it's a, it's truly a workhorse. So here you get those bells and whistles. You can still do your free motion quilting on here on all of the computerized machines. You can still do your quilting. You can still do handbags on certain models. It's just, if you are not sticking to one hobby and you need the extra things, those bells and whistles, this is the way to go. Spoil yourself here, where if you just find yourself 95% of the time using a straight stitch, you really should consider going this way. And honestly speaking, I know it sounds crazy to say, but no sewing room has just one, one machine. You know, sometimes we have to have machines for different things and different um, projects. So that's something to keep in mind too. Also, I was gonna say, between the TL18 and mm -hmm. the DX7, I think a good point is the TL18 is a pickup truck <laughs> and this is an SUV. Yes. So it yes. does everything, the SUV can do everything the pickup truck can do. Right. But the pickup truck's gonna tow better. It's gonna, you know, That's load things analogy. in the bed of the truck better. Yes. So it has the, the few things it can do better, but the SUV can do better at all these other things like hauling around the whole family. It's know? got the AC seats, That's you know. Right. It's got all the little knickknacks that are gonna make yes. life awesome, That's so but that true. pickup truck is still nice to have. It's still super and nice. it's, you could still use it for everything exactly. this one can do, but this one's gonna have just those extra features and this one's exactly. gonna have just those extra purposes. It's like straight to the point. Straight to the, yeah geared oriented to, towards one purpose basically exactly, you guys. so there is this is a very like vague video that we just wanted to kind of break it down to get your thought process going because this is kind of what we go through when we sit with our customers and talk with them when they don't have like maybe um a starting point you know they just kind of want to start fresh they want to hear where to go so that's how you have to do it you have to think about what's your purpose first what do you like to do? What do you want to start to do? And where do you want to go? That's also something to consider when you're getting a machine is not fulfilling your needs right now, but giving yourself a little bit of room to grow into something else that you've thought about. So that's something to consider too. Next, we talked about the categories. You have to decide where you're going to go. You know, do you want to go computerized? Do you want to go mechanical? Do you need a cover stitch? Do you need a serger? Or do you want just something small and easy to work with? So you have to think about that too. So 
we're definitely going to do more videos in the future breaking down each category and going into it a little bit more um, but if you want help in deciding what's the right machine for you we really do take pride in those personal conversations with you guys and uncovering what your purpose is and what would fit best for you so you can reach out to us at the shop of course it's 813-661-9000 or you can send us an email at sewing machines with an s 411 at gmail.com and shoot us a little email there